Well, the PACT Act has been signed into law, which includes the Camp Lejeune Justice Act. You can find out what this could mean for the millions of Marines, family members, and workers exposed to toxic water at the Marine base. I know you've heard all these commercials. You probably hear this in your head. So we've got Ken Harrell here this morning from the Joy Law Firm to kind of break it down and tell us what exactly this means. Ken, thank you for coming today. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, very passionate about uh, talking about these cases. And you're right. Uh, you, you see a thousand uh, ads, and I think people are still a little bit confused about exactly what it means. Yeah, but, what um, it means and who it can. So let's start first. Who is eligible to receive compensation under the Lejeune Justice Act? Well, anybody can file a claim if they were on the base between 1953 and 1987 for at least 30 days. Doesn't have to be consecutive because, uh, you know, we've got over a million Marines who would have been stationed there during that period wow. of time. Obviously, probably just as many family members that would have lived on the base but a lot of civilian employees as well. And so, of course, folks that might be working at a school or a hospital, uh, they would have been there you know, five days a week, but not 30 consecutive days. Why is the status of the PAC Act? Like, what contains the Lejeune Justice Act? Well, the, the, I'm, I'm so, for, it was signed into law a week ago, uh, so this yesterday. Is fresh, so right? it's fresh. So it's fresh, but this was, when I say it's fresh, this was probably a 15, 20 year effort. Uh, the real leaders of pushing this through were some of the Marines who uh, had just tragic stories, you know, children who died of leukemia, or spouses who died, you know, they've suffered from a host of conditions. The biggest cluster of male breast cancer cases that I'm aware of anywhere in the world are Marines that served at Camp Lejeune. Um, and they pushed this forever because uh, there were two problems with bringing these cases in the past. One, the statute of limitations, because they shut down the last contaminated well in 1987. And there's also a doctrine that says that as a service member, you can't sue the government for service-related injuries or conditions. Oh. Both of those defenses have been addressed in this law, which was signed into effect by the president last Wednesday. Um, so now there's a new two-year statute of limitations, which basically started uh, August 10. So if someone's watching, they were like, my daddy was there or I was there. I mean, they need to jump on this now? You know, I, I, yeah, I, what I would say to anybody, Megan, is that if you were at Camp Lejeune during that period of time, uh, we know the severity of the contamination of the water from a whole host of different sources. Mm -hmm. If you've had any significant condition, but particularly if you've had any sort of cancer, and particularly bloodborne cancers like leukemia, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, bladder, kidney, liver, uh, you know, the, the organs that are processed in a lot of blood. Uh, if you or a loved one has suffered from one of those conditions and you were at Camp Lejeune, at least get it screened. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything to have the case screened. Because what if, like, you know, you were there, you don't have anything yet, but that doesn't mean next year something doesn't creep up or the next? Well, and that's the unknown. I mean, there's a long latency period for a lot of these cancers. Um, and so you, you can certainly have people that have been diagnosed recently, and it's still you know, pretty strong scientific evidence that it would be related to the nature of the chemicals that were in that water. Um, at this point, uh, what is unknown is how they're going to deal with these situations for conditions that develop down the road. Yeah. Um, but again, um, if you have been affected by uh, a serious health problem, at least get it reviewed. Now, I'm take a look at it. Is this a class action lawsuit? It is not a class action. I think that's a misunderstanding that some people have, and I get it because there's going to be so many people affected. But these are all individual cases, so each claim will stand on its own merits. Now, it does remain to be seen how did the Department of the Navy, you have to file an initial claim with the Navy, how are they going to deal with this volume of claims? See, can you imagine the paperwork? I, oh, it, it's oh. even electronic. It's going to be crazy. And, and also the court system in North Carolina, they all have to be filed in the Eastern District of North Carolina. Um, so we'll have to see how they're going to deal with the volume of cases, but they are individual cases. Well, now, uh, people that are watching it, they're like, oh my gosh, okay, I'm so glad that you've made it make sense. Is this something that one, they can kind of navigate on their own, or would you suggest, you know, hiring an attorney like yourself and your law firm? Well, I, 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 mean, I would strongly urge them to get legal counsel. I mean, you, you can try to do anything on, by yourself, but I, I joke, you know, if, if the air conditioner at my house breaks, I can go stare <laughs> at it, but fixing air conditioners is not what I do. Right. So it's probably not, I'm not going to fix it because I'm not going to know how right. to fix it. Even the YouTube tutorials. It, it, can't, and, yeah. you, know, you think about some of the challenges here. One, these records are decades old. So right. being able to procure the documentation that you need, dealing with the claim process, they're very expert driven cases because you still have to prove causation. Uh, we've, we've, we're working with a number of oncologists, epidemiologists, uh, neurologists, because Parkinson's is another condition yeah. that, that's been Jeez, linked. So, many things. so it's it's a complicated process. And what I do know that nobody can do on their own is if you end up having to file a federal lawsuit, 
then of course you have to have an attorney that's issue with that. Right. So I, I would urge, urge people, you know, contact an experienced firm and, and take advantage. It's, it, there's no financial risk. If there's no recovery, you don't owe anything. Um, but I think you're going to need to have some guidance to get through this process. Yeah, because th th this is a big one. Joy Law Firm, you see the information on your screen. If you, you know, are still confused by this and need to ask some questions, give them a call, look them up. They'll be glad to kind of walk you through the next step. Absolutely. So, thank yep. you for coming on and talking yeah. about this. Well, thank this. you for allowing yes. me to be here. We appreciate it.